Big Brother's watching now, so you can kind of make sure it's focused in on the Is this one recording too? Yeah, I already put it on. Oh, okay. Well, sometimes you can get it. Sounds good. Yeah, I would be just Last month, and we did. We had some technical difficulties with uh, with the live streaming, so it didn't work. But this time, it's working. Um, so it's twelve o'clock sharp. I'll just wait up a minute. How's everyone doing today? You're glad to be inside instead of outside. <laughs> nice day outside. Yeah. So I, I think I know most of you. Um, my name is Jeff Melland and I'm a website designer and an internet marketer. So I do a lot of Google Ads uh, management and I do Facebook ads as well. And um, I want to do these seminars to get out and meet with people and get feedback and help people and make new connections, maybe make, get some more business connections and so on. So, uh, so I'm glad you're here. And then, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about, I think about 20 minutes or so, and then Steve will do his part. Uh, Steve is with Quality Computer Services in Alexandria. And... He, well, he'll tell you all about what he does for the second part. And we should be done before one. And then we, we can do some Q&A between and at, at the end as well. So, uh, Can you see that OK? It's a little dim, isn't it? It's, this, this is my new $89 projector. I guess you know, it's not that bright. Uh, you kind of get what you pay for, I guess. So, But if you can see it, maybe, it's, maybe it'll work OK. So. So, and everybody got food, water, you can go back for more. There's, uh, there's more there. I think there's plenty there. Um, so I don't want to take it back 
with me. So eat it up. So, all right. So this is going to be kind of an overview. This isn't going to be like a real technical thing. Uh, it's going to be kind of, uh, kind of. Like, hope, hopefully, I'll share some good ideas with you. That if I get, oh yeah, I got to turn this on. All this technology here. There we go. So this is the overview of what we're going to be doing here. How to reach more people when you boost a post. So, how many people in here have done Facebook ads at all? Like at least boosted a post. To raise your hand. So we've got. Maybe half or a little more than half, okay. So probably the easiest way to do Facebook advertising is to boost a post, because you see that button, that big blue button says boost post, you know, a lot. Um, so there's a setting though that it defaults to that kind of limits the number of people you reach, and I'm gonna talk about that. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about why Facebook ads fail so get into some of the behavior and the psychology about why an ad works and why it doesn't. So that's kind of really important, I think. How to make your Facebook ads 10 times better, um, and then a simple strategy for success on Facebook, and then some tips for getting your ads noticed better. So, hey Mike, could you close that door? Thanks. All right, so we have handouts. This one here, Steve has handouts too, but this is mine. I just got one page. He's got about 20. <laughs> so if you want to take some notes on that, you can. And then notice on the bottom, there's a spot. You can tear this off and leave the bottom. And on the bottom, it says um, there's three options that you can check off which option you would like. If you are interested in the follow-up video, I will email it to you, and that will be that'll just go over kind of what we've talked about in a, a little bit more detail. Plus, I have another follow-up video that I used last month at the seminar, and I'll send you that one too, because um, that covers some different things. That's like a 15-minute one, and uh, this other one is going to be shorter, I think. Uh, and then also, there's a coupon for $100. So if you do happen to do some business with me and and uh, you want to hire me to do something, I'll give you a $100 coupon if you just let me know, just check that off and I'll send you a coupon with your name on it. Um, and then if you happen to know other groups that would like this information, let me know that too because I'm always looking for new places to share this stuff. Okay, so I'll remind you again at, at the end about that. So, about boosting a post. Um, there is an option, a, a setting in the ad that says optimize for engagement and that's the default when you boost a post, Facebook is going to try to show your ad to people who are more likely to engage with your post, which means more likely to like it or share it or comment on it. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but that doesn't mean that they are your potential customers. So if you just want to reach everybody and reach more people, you can switch that setting over to optimize for reach. That's the other option. Um, and I did a test with this. I, I did two ads, I wish this was brighter, uh, and I put $10 each on two different ads and they're very similar. They had the same audience. It was like 25 mile radius of Alexandria. And uh, it said I could reach up to 17,000 people. Um, if I would have put more money into it, I would have been, been closer to reaching more people. But I only put $10 in. And so when I just left it at the default of Optimize for Engagement, I reached 611 people. With the other ad, I changed that setting to Optimize for Reach. So I'm telling Facebook, don't worry about whether they're going to engage or not with my ad. Just show it to more people. And there I reached 2,738. So I reached almost five times more people with my simple boost post ad just by changing that one setting. Now, if you only boost the post um, and then let it run, it just defaults to that setting. So you've got to go into the ads manager and change that. 
And I will have on-screen instructions on how to do that in a follow-up video. So if you want to see how to do that exactly, I can show you that in the, in the follow-up video. So, all right, any questions on that? Does that make sense, what I said? So there's all these different settings you can, you know, you do have a lot of control over how things go, so. So why would a really well-written ad that's very well thought out and has a good image, why would that fail? There's so many different things that go into making things work in advertising. So let's just look at some of the reasons that ads can fail, even if they're really good ads. No one wants what you're selling. So if you sell these, this is a, can you see that? It's a cap with hair on top. <laughs> Maybe some people want that, but most people probably don't want that. And there's probably better examples of, there's probably better examples of things that people don't want, you know. So even if you have a really, really good ad, but nobody wants, wants it, I mean, you're just not gonna get anywhere, right? Or if you show your ad to the wrong audience. So if you have this little girl here looking at your ad and you're selling surfboards, you know, even if the ad's really good and the surfboard's really good, she's probably not gonna be interested in that, right? Does that make sense? So it's, it's, you just have to think of more than just the marketing part. It's the, it's the whole thing, what you're selling and everything. Um, this one, this is a story, this little, can you see that the little girl there, she's standing by this box, and there's a $200 dollhouse in the box, and she's holding a four pound can of cookies. And she ordered this from Amazon by herself without her parents' permission. She, she you know the Alexa, the, uh, the Amazon Alexa Echo Dot thing that you can talk into? You can order stuff on Amazon just by talking to it, and she did that. She ordered a dollhouse and four pounds of cookies and her mom didn't know and it arrived at their house. This is a true story, it happened I think last Christmas time. Um, and so there she is, she got her <laughs> box of cookies. Um, but she, I, I believe the story was that her mom donated the, do, the dollhouse and sent the cookies back, so. <laughs> it was in the national news, so. Um, but you know, she's, she was probably the right audience for that. She just wasn't really old enough to be able to be responsible to spend her own money or spend her parents' money on that. So <laughs> kind of the wrong audience in a way, but kind of the right audience. So uh, with Facebook, you can do so much targeting with audiences. You know, you can, you, can, you can show your ads to just the local area or the whole country or the whole world. Of course, it gets expensive if you do that. You can narrow it down by gender, by age. You can show ads all the way down to people 13 years of age. I thought it was 18, but I looked it up this morning. It's thir you can go down to 13 years old. So a 13-year-old can see your ads. So, but she's, she probably didn't even see an ad. She probably saw something on TV and just talked to her uh, Amazon device. Uh, anyway, okay. How to make your Facebook ads 10 times better. First of all, was there any questions on that? Like the targeting and matching, matching uh, ads to the audience kind of thing. Everyone kind of understand that idea. You can do that a lot better on Facebook than you can with Google because with Facebook, you have to be logged into Facebook to be using it. And most people give Facebook some information, like their age and gender, Plus, Facebook follows everything you do. They keep track of everything. They know how many times you've visited different pages, and they, they kind of get a, build a profile of what you are interested in so that they can show, show you stuff that you're interested in. So, I mean, it does make sense, so. All right, so here's one tip for how to make your ads better. Tell them in the ad what you want them to do. This is a post, the, the wine and art crawl, the wine ale and art crawl is going on downtown today actually from 5 to 7.30. And I'm boosting this post for them. Uh, it's an event, or I don't know, that's, that's not the event there I guess. But, but so I made this little ad here. It says, join us for the wine art 
wine, ale, and art crawl, and it says, share this post so your friends will know. And on the bottom it, tell, it says, I have 56 people have shared it. So it's a lot of shares. Now it is um, something that people would kind of naturally want to share because if they know, they know their, uh, some of their friends that would be interested in this, so they want to share it anyway. But it helps when you tell them what, to, what you want them to do. You know, click on this to get this, or uh, like this, or whatever. I've got more to say about likes later, but um, so that's one thing. Just keep that in mind when you write, make it an ad. Tell them what you want them to do. This is um, focus on the problem rather than the solution, because your ad will resonate more with the viewers if you focus on their problem instead of focusing on your solution. If you think about that, it really is a powerful uh, insight. Um, and most businesses will talk about what their services are and what their solutions are, and they won't talk about the needs of the customer. Because it's just a natural thing. You, you know, you, it's like, this is what we do. We offer these services. You know, but if you flip that back a little bit and talk about the problem, like if you've got um, back pain, you know, think of a chiropractor. You know, you could have an ad that just said, you know, we offer uh, chiropractic services that helps your back, your neck, your whatever. And that's pretty standard. You hear about it. everybody says that. All the all the chiropractors do. But if you have an ad that says, do you have a sore back? And it just focuses on that one thing. People that have a sore back, that's going to resonate with them. Now, you're going to miss people who have a sore knee. But you can make a separate ad for that, and you can really target them with that. So that's, it's just a really, really powerful thing is to focus on the problem if you can, rather than focus on the solution. Now I think of an insurance company, you know, you can say, well, we offer insurance for houses and for life insurance, health insurance, whatever. But maybe people are not aware of some of the problems that they might have if they don't have insurance for some things. So you can say, you know, if you don't have insurance for this, or if your house is underinsured, we hear that in our networking group a lot, make sure you have the right insurance on your house because you might have this problem. You know? so try to talk about the problem and try to be specific. It's because if you plaster everything you do in an ad, it's just gonna, there's too much stuff on Facebook already. You just wanna be focused on one thing. So, um, and then pay attention to the results, you know. When you're running ads, because um, no one knows which ads will do better than others, really. You try your best, write a, write a really good ad, um, but you don't know for sure what people are gonna react to and how they're gonna react. Um, and then so look at the results of your ads, reuse the ones that, that do the best, run multiple ads, not just one, and keep testing. So that's, that's the way that you win if you're going to really get serious about making Facebook ads work for you better, you need to be running multiple ads. And you know, a lot of people I think will just run one ad and then they'll see how it does. Or they won't even look at results, you know, they'll just run it. And then maybe they'll run a couple more and then nothing really happened and then they think Facebook doesn't work. So it's, it's just kind of human nature, you know, to, to kind of not put too much into it and just kind of throw stuff out there. But if you're a little bit more method, metho, what's the word, methodologic, method? Methodical. Methodical, is that it? <laughs> Whatever, <right> okay. <laughs> Have a little bit more of a plan and a strategy for it. And then, and if you think about one ad versus multiple ads, think about um, if you're, Oh, if you're if you're buying lottery tickets, you buy one ticket, or you buy ten tickets. 
you have 10 times better chance to win if you buy 10 than if you buy one, right? But if you buy one, you, you know, that's, you just have a better chance at finding an ad that works good if you do more ads, so. Kind of common sense, really. So a strategy for success, so this is what I was saying, make a budget and plan how often you will run ads. So you might say, I'm gonna run an ad, one ad a week, a different ad every week for the next month or two. Of course you have to have a reason for it, but if it's just general branding type stuff, you could do that. Uh, you could spend $10 a week, you know, $40 in a month. It's not too bad. Um, if you're local, I mean, if, you're, if your audience is local, you can do a lot of advertising with not very much money. So, and if you're getting bigger than that, statewide, nationwide, then it can get expensive. Um, and then, like I said, track results. Look at your results. There's all kinds of results that you get when you run ads. The buying cycle matters. So, the buying cycle basically is starting with uh, awareness and education, and then with the, the steps that people go through before they buy something. So first, and actually it starts like with the problem, being aware of a problem you have or a need, and then moving on to, well, what's the solution? And then where do I get the solution? And then there's, there may be many places you can get the solution. So be aware of where your customers are in the buying cycle. If you're showing ads to a lot of people, if you're a realtor and you're showing ads to a lot of people that just bought a house, then that's a waste, right? So if you can control that, it's, it's sometimes hard to control, but um, if you're aware of that, that's a huge thing because if you can connect with people, the right people at the right time, when they're in the right stage, that's when you really get results. So. Yeah, Facebook, and I would say Facebook ads should show to people in the early steps of the buying cycle like the problem, solution, and education, rather than in the later purchase steps. And I think for most businesses, that's probably true, not for every business. I mean, if you're a restaurant and you're trying to sell, if you have coupon or a special, a special um, burritos tonight at your restaurant, you know, then you can sell. You can kind of almost sell direct, you know. But for a lot of things, I mean, people are not going Facebook to shop. They're not looking for you at all. That's why you gotta be, it's kind of like this interruptive advertising, and then if you can catch your attention, you try to give them something useful or interesting. And you try to make a connection. And then hopefully later on, off of Facebook, you can have, you know, do a sale, sell something, or have a client. So, so now I think that's true for both service businesses and retail. Um, it varies, but um, you know, it's if you want to get your name out there locally, you can. You know, you have a lot of power because so many people are on Facebook. Not everybody is, but a lot of people are. <coughs> so, and uh, you know, you may want to you may want to have other kinds of advertising to complement this as well. But definitely, it's a, a big one. So Facebook is. So uh, does that make sense? Anybody questions? Um, and then three, three tips to get your ads noticed. So a colorful image that's different than everything else. So the thing about that though, if everything on Facebook is colorful, then maybe a black and white image would be better because you want to be different, you want to stand out. Because people are scrolling through that news feed pretty fast, right? Does anybody scroll f slow and read everything? <laughs> You slow down when something catches your eye, right? So, and then the image and the headline should both introduce the same compelling topic or story. So, you know, that gets into the creation of an ad. Um, Mike was just telling me about a, an ad. He just did a video this morning, was it? Yeah. Uh, on his locksmith, and he demonstrated how you uh, can get into a lock that has a key broke off, right? Is that what yeah. it was? Yeah. Yeah. So people, now that, that is a piece of information that not everybody 
would really realize if they if they broke the key off in a, in a lock, they might think, well, it's locked, nobody's going to get in. But his point is, you can use like a, a, a coin or a screwdriver and put it in a little bit and turn, turn it and get right in. And I think, did you even have a case where people were getting into a, a, a place like that? I think we did. Yeah, well, that's what we figured it might have got in that way because it was a yeah. church side door had broken key in it. Yeah. They didn't know how they got in and I yeah. it out. Probably was, yeah. So the point is, it's a, a piece of useful information. Um, so if you're entertaining or, or you have something useful, but he isn't selling anything, he's giving something away. He's giving people, he's helping people. That's what you need to do on Facebook, is help people and make connections, okay? So match your ad to your audience. If you can, it's a challenge, but try to do that. Try to think about what your audience is thinking. It's, they talk about you know the avatar, knowing who your customer is, know really get a good idea of who they are, and then with that in mind, you create your ad. That's a really big thing. I mean, I see people teaching that all over the place online. On, and there, there's a lot of education going on uh, online with Facebook advertising, and that's one of the one of the big things. And it, it is right. Um, and I, I'm sure a lot of you probably heard that before. You know, you, you need to know who your audience is. So, okay, general guidelines. I'm gonna I'll wrap up here in a minute. Um, these are some things I would do. Encourage check-ins at your business. Uh, there's so many people that say like us on Facebook, but I don't like I don't like that so much. I'd rather have, you know, people when they get there have a sign that says check in. Then all your friends see that, oh, you're checked in there. Um, don't try to buy likes, let likes happen naturally. Because really in the real world, you know, you don't try to, you don't ask people to like you, do you? But people are doing that with their businesses all the time. Like, like us on Facebook, you know, it just doesn't really make sense to me. Um, the likes thing on Facebook's a little, uh, a little artificial. I mean, it is real people behind things, but, um, you know, has anyone watched it? Uh, has anyone been watching the TV series Fargo? There was an episode. Right? Did you see the movie? That's old, old from a while back. The series is on now, and a while back there was an episode where this uh, guy was telling this this lady, "You got to be on Facebook. I got like 800 friends, and I don't even know who they are." <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it's like, yeah, likes. Likes can be valuable if you have a lot of them and if they're good quality, if they really are your potential customers. But, um, and then if you don't have your, your page set up, your business page set up, then you should set up your page. Uh, install a Facebook pixel so you can track people who've been on your website uh, and then show ads to them later. You can do that, it's not hard to do. You just have to put this code on your, on your website and tie, basically ties your uh, Facebook advertising account to your website. Um, and then make use of the events. You can add events for your business if you have any kind of an event. Just, I, I don't see a lot of businesses using that and I think, that, I think that's a, a pretty good thing that can, can work well and it's free. Um, and then for practice, just start boosting some posts. And I have a lot of this covered in the follow-up video. Um, and then the Pages Manager app on your smartphone, if you don't know what that is and you want to post stuff to your business page and not get it mixed up with your personal Facebook stuff, this will solve that problem. So it's just another free app, just like the Facebook app, but this is called Facebook Pages Manager. Make use of that because that makes it a lot easier to post stuff on your business page. Have a little bit of that on the follow-up video as well and then so this is just a summary of what we went over how to reach more people with boosting a post um, why good ads fail how to make your ads better a simple strategy and some tips for getting your ads noticed so back to the form again um, some of what I got in this follow-up video from last time has you know the page set up the pixel set up how to create audiences uh, and boosting a post versus the ads manager, um, tips for better ads, 
links to some better, really good Facebook tutorials, which is in Facebook itself, and then how to get free photos online legally. So there's a way to get photos legally online that you can use in your ads. And then plus I have that $100 coupon there too, so that you know all that stuff's on the bottom. So if you want to do that, I know I have some businesses that, uh, you know, that came to my last seminar that they don't really want to learn how to do this stuff, they, but they're interested in maybe having me help them do that, hire me to help them. So I'm kind of making a package to do that, and that's where that coupon falls into place. So if you want that uh, coupon, just, you know, do that. So, and then I'm done, so I'm going to turn it over to Steve. And you don't have a, a PowerPoint, right? I'm just going to talk. So we'll turn this off. And thank you for your attention on this. questions at the end so even though my packet has a lot of pages I'm not going to go through it page by page word for word and I assume you guys can all read it and ask questions email me call me later on my main objective today is to cover the nitty-gritty of what's going on out there and how to hopefully prevent the infection in the first place not you know become a customer by fault and needing to help you get things off your machine. I just wanted to be here today to help you keep your machine clean and network secure, all those different things. So um, first and foremost, my name is Steve Sadesky. I've got a company here, Quality Computer Services. Been in town about 11 years. Um, moved up from the Twin Cities, was in business there for 20 years. And that was, for the most part, international network setup because 30 years ago, nobody had computers, so we were putting in the first computers at auto parts stores, HVAC, um, furniture stores, auto parts stores, any business that needed a computer, we went out, ran the cables, put the stuff in, <coughs> did everything from the ground up to get them working, and then maintained their networks from our office in Minneapolis. Um, you know, we have, before I left that company and moved up here, we had um, one customer, John Deere, that had over 900 locations, over 20,000 people. So, you know, big difference now going to somebody's home and setting up a wireless router for them, doing that kind of stuff. But I do do a lot of businesses in town and home. So anything you would want, business home, give me a call. I can do anything from setting up a router, making a cable, to supporting 9,000 people, 20,000 people on a network. So kind of wide open for whatever you want to use me for. Um, today, gonna go through, first and foremost, front page, um, you know, coupon. You've got the flyer that just tells you what I do. There is the offer for discounts and things on there. Goes through the end of July, so if you take that with you, I do have extra copies if you want more to take back to work, give to friends, that's good to pass it around. It's good to the end of July for any services or purchases. A um, couple pages with examples of fake emails, fake pop-ups, different things that show up on your computer. Um, I will cover, especially the first part of that, the pop-ups, that, that's a very important thing, and the fake emails. Um, Joe just asked me about that. This, this morning, he got one from the IRS. Um, covers the next page, the first blue page. Goes through a lot of the buzzwords that you hear about. The, you know, the botnets, the malwares, the different things, that phishing, and all the stuff that that covers what those actually are. Uh, 13 tips to protect you from ransomware. That was the big one in the news a few weeks ago. Um, the WannaCry virus that was shutting down businesses and campuses and it hit colleges huge because that's where they focused it was to professors and students emails and that's ransomware that's something we're going to talk about real quick where it hijacks your computer encrypts all your data and you basically have a bunch of data that you can no longer read 
and for people they want you to then pay them 500 bucks to get your data back and in a lot of cases you pay them 500 bucks and you don't get your data back so now you're not only out all of your data but you also just gave away 500 bucks so it's just that salt in the wound idea where you can't trust the thief so you don't want to pay them and hope they give you your data back uh, quick write up about scams that go through on PayPal and the way people will rip you off if you are selling things on eBay. Um, that's a big one that I deal with a lot of people. They send things out because people paid them, but they want it sent to a different address. They want it sent different ways. And if they have you send something to an address that isn't their you know, legal address on PayPal, even though they tell you to send it there, you send it there, they can actually contact PayPal, say, hey, I never got it. And because you sent it to an unverified address, PayPal will give them the money back and you now have no money and no product. So they know these rules better than we do. And if there's a way to rip you off, they found it. So just you know, to be safe, to know that there are people out there that are taking advantage of every possible way to rip people off and then um, the last thing with ransomware with viruses the idea of backing up your data um, last page is just kind of a neat idea it is actually an external hard drive just like this one here that you can back up your data on the difference is that one actually has a key code keypad on it so if somebody steals it they need to know the numbers to punch in to unlock it. So even if somebody steals your backup, if it's got proprietary business information, if it's got your customer list on it, if it's got something that somebody else could put you out of business, um, you know, one of the people I deal with is a exterminator and he's got a mailing list that he sends his emails out to and his mailing lists for his spider spraying every spring and all of his different things. If somebody else got his customer list and could send things to all his customers and say, I can do it for 20% off or whatever, it's a business closing proposition at that point. Um, he doesn't want that data to be lost. So different ways to really protect your data. You need a backup. If you want that backup to be secure, then that's an option where even if somebody steals your laptop case, you've got your computer, your backup, everything in it, they can't get into your data. And that's the, the, the key is to not get ripped off, not get your data stolen. Um, other ways to back up, you know, Carbonite, the cloud, different ways like that where it's off premise, you don't have it with you. The downside of doing Carbonite and the, the web-based backups is the recovery time. You know, I've had people where they have a computer, it dies, whatever, hard drive fails, reload windows, they want all their pictures, documents, everything back, three and a half, four days to download it from Carbonate. So it's there, it's, it's safe, it's, you can get it, it's just not instantaneous. You don't get it back instantly, you're not right back in business, you're not running within a day, it's, you've got a week or so of rebuilding your business and getting things back going. So this is where having a local backup that you have, you can dump all the data on here back into your computer in an hour. And your backup, you're running, everything is right where you left it. Um, with a backup, you have to be engaged. You can't plug in your backup and walk away and have your machine back up every day, every hour, every five minutes, because if you get a virus, everything on that drive is gone too. So that's again, back to the ransomware and the way that they go through your hard drive, they encrypt every document, every PDF, every Word document, Excel document, pictures, everything you have on there gets encrypted, they look for external drives, they get encrypted, they look for network drives, they get encrypted. If you have a shared drive on your machine that's actually the hard drive of somebody else's machine, that gets encrypted. 
So you have to be proactive. You have to kind of keep things where you need to plug this in once a week, once a month, do your backup. When it's done, unplug it. Um, if, if you have something that you have a lot of data and it's going to take hours to do a backup, then you do it at night. But don't be using the computer, don't be online, don't be checking emails when it's backing up because when that's plugged in, your backup is vulnerable to getting hacked just like your computer. So different ways to do that. Now kind of into the idea of how you get the hack. Um, and that's that first packet with the pop-up warnings and never follow the number listed. That is still to this day, you know, my bread and butter, <laughs> my, my, you know, every day I'm getting phone calls about this. I have to deal with this on a daily basis. What I hope to get is a call saying, I've got this thing on my screen. If I get that call, we're fine. You can tell them to turn their computer off, turn it back on, it goes away. Control Alt Delete, go to Task Manager, close your browser, it goes away. If you call the phone number, all bets are off because once they're in your computer, they have access back into your computer anytime they want. They have access to all of your data that's on your computer. And when you tell them that you're not gonna pay them the 300 bucks, 500 bucks, whatever they tell you that they want for taking this virus off your computer that they put on in the first place, then they'll put a password on your machine that you don't know and now it's basically ransomware where now they want you to pay them to unlock your computer because you didn't pay them to clean your computer. So it's one thing after another and they don't care about sob stories. They don't care if you tell them you just don't have the money and I've never had anybody give enough of a sob story that they've ever given it back for free. I, you know, people have just sat there crying to them about not having money, not having the chance to do it. They just can't do it. And they just hang up on them and that's it. You don't get your data back from these people. And the biggest thing is to not pay because it's one thing to lose everything, but to lose everything and 500 bucks or a thousand bucks or something, that's just, you know, you're, you're not going to get your data back. And that's been, you know, this has been going on for years and there was one group out there that started this and they would actually give your data back because they would hijack your machine, you'd pay them, you'd get your stuff back. It was good business for them. Then everybody started doing it and it's happening so fast and these people don't have it set up in such a way that they really even know who you are and what your machine is. So if you pay them, they don't even know which machine you're paying for to issue you a code to unlock your, your data. So it's, it's, it's to the point where you hear about the dark web. This stuff is out there for sale on the dark web. You can buy a ransomware package. You can set it up, you can put it out there. And all it is is it's little bits and seeds that they pop all over the internet on different websites and you happen to hit one of these sites, doesn't matter if it's Facebook, if it's Craigslist, if it's anything, you know, you're anywhere doing anything. You know, I was getting these popping up constantly watching the NHL playoffs on my internet. You go on there, working in the office, you pop up the hockey game on the other computer and all of a sudden, boom, here's a warning that I've got a virus and I need to call this number. So you turn it off, turn it back on and go back to work again. But it's constant, it's everywhere. And if you call them, please call me because once they're in your machine, turn it off and don't turn it back on until somebody gets their program off of it that gives them access in. Because once you've hung up on them, turned off your machine on them, if you turn your machine back on, they jump in, put the password on it, call you back and say, okay, let's talk, you know, are you gonna pay me now type thing because you didn't pay for the first fix and you hung up on them, you disconnected, great. But a lot of people 
they'll hang up, they'll say, I, I'm done talking to you, they hang up, they don't realize they're still in your computer. And then all of a sudden, you either watch your data disappear, you watch the password get put on, you watch them do something that you, you always turn off your computer, then you hang up. Or you unplug your router, and then you hang up. But make sure their connection is broken, and don't go back online until somebody has taken that remote access program off the computer. Or they will take everything you've got on there and lock it up so you can't see it. And that's their number one way of getting people to pay them is that second phase where you don't pay them for their service to get rid of the virus that they put on in the first place. So then they lock your machine up and now you have to pay them to get your machine back. In those cases, you can actually pay to get your machine unlocked because they're dealing with you directly. They know it's your machine. They know that they can just go in there and they just put a password in it and you need that password in order to open your machine. They tell you what it is and you can get back into your machine and everything's fine. Um, I can usually get around those. Um, so I can, even if you get to that point where they've locked up your machine, I can still get your machine rolled back to before they did that and get rid of that password that they put onto your machine. So it's still not a complete loss. You don't have to pay them 500 bucks to get your data back. It cost me 100 bucks or so to go in there and roll it back to where you're back to normal. So, yeah. Is this a trend now that it's more, ran more of this ransomware stuff and less of the uh, older stuff? It's way more ransomware because viruses, the first virus that ever came out was a cute little virus. You got this thing that popped up, it was just an email that went around. It says, hey, you want a free poster? You click on it and your CD drive would pop out of your computer. <laughs> it's like, oh, neat, wow. So, you know, that was the first virus that I ever saw that was 20 plus years ago. Wow. Then it went to where they had just weird little things that would email, I love you to everybody in your address book or whatever they decided to do. And then they realized, hey, we can get vicious. And they started writing, you know, viruses that would just destroy machines. Then they started thinking, hey, instead of destroying machines, let's make money at this. And they started hijacking machines, hijacking email, and stealing data because that's the big key. They want to make money at this. They, they're no longer just people goofing around, writing these viruses in order to have fun. They're making billions and billions of dollars selling your data or having you pay to get your data back. And that's the, the whole thing here is to keep them out of your machine. Um, don't call the phone numbers, don't click on the links in emails. Um, if you see an email that's from the IRS, like Joe's, if you see, like mine, I just had an email yesterday. American Express had a questionable charge on my card and they wanted me to click this link to deny it or accept it. I don't have an American Express credit card. So pretty obvious, it's a fake email. But if you have an American Express card and you think, oh, maybe I should take a look at this, first thing you always do is take your cursor on a computer. If you're on a tablet or on a phone, it's harder to do this. But if you're on a computer, you take your cursor, put the little pointer over the link that they want you to click. And then at the bottom, it's gonna show you where that link is gonna go. And it's not gonna say American Express, it's not gonna say UPS, it's, you know, whatever this fake email is from, whether it's UPS saying you have a package and they need to have you verify something, you point at the link and it's not gonna be anything to do with the company that claims to be emailing you this email. And that's a dead giveaway that it's fake. So that's the first thing to not get infected in the first place because once you click on that your machine's infected and you're you're done you just don't get a second chance you don't get to turn your machine off and back on you're stuck you have to now you know have a backup and that's where having something to go back to because 
if you pay them the ransom for your data, you're not going to get it back. And if you don't have a backup copy of your pictures, of your documents, of all your stuff, it's gone. So either a hard copy that you hold on to, put it in a fireproof safe in your house so that it doesn't get burned, um, put one in a safe deposit box at the bank so in case your house burns down, tornado hits it, whatever, there's another copy offset, off site that's still local so you can get a business back up and running in a day as opposed to a week. Um, if you want that extra level of security where just in case something destroys Alexandria and you need a copy of your data, you put it at Carbonite. And then, you know, if something that big happened, nobody's going to be out shopping for your stuff for the next week anyway. You've got time to get your stuff back together. But that's the, you know, how mission critical is your data? How much do you want to back it up? And, you know, Carbonite, 100 bucks a year, pretty cheap as a insurance policy to have that extra data out there where if something like this gets stolen, destroyed, you have the option of getting your data back. Um, just to show you an idea of how, you know, vicious these people are, I was at an older couple's house, um, you know, he's a retired construction guy, she's an artist, they got one of these things, they called the number, went through this whole spiel, I went over there, I was there, the day after it happened, cleaning up their computer to get rid of this virus and this remote access program, and they had taken these people for $2,000 the day before by getting a credit card number and charging, they said it was going to be 200 bucks. they charged them $2,000. And they were going round and round with their credit card company and they got the charge denied credit card companies, you know, knows these things are happening. So that's the other piece is that they're starting to ask for bank routing numbers so that they can do a wire transfer because once you send cash, you can't get it back. And if you use a credit card, they know that you can cancel these payments and they're not going to get paid. So now they want bitcoins, they want cash transfers, they want wired money because they want something that they can keep and credit card companies aren't going to take back from them. Well, I'm there the next day. They had gone to the bank that morning, canceled their credit card, denied this charge. These people called back and they're like, oh, we're sorry. We took too much money from you. So if you can give us the, your new credit card number, we'll issue a refund to that new credit card number. And it's like, <laughs> you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> you know? These people, they're older, they're trusting. In their day and age, people didn't lie, cheat, scam, steal as much as they do now. So they think somebody calls up or something pops up on the computer and says, you have a virus, I must have to call this number. And that's a huge chunk of the people I deal with. They're, they're 65 plus, they get bit by these things because they trust people they don't think people are going to rip them off. Um, I had one gentleman, the day after his wife passed away, he got scammed by somebody calling up saying, we're with whatever group and you need to pay this and whatever. And when you're in a down state, you don't think straight. Or if they get you to panic, you don't think straight. And that's what they focus on. If they want you to panic, they want you to be nervous, and they want you to make a bad decision, and then they've got you. So, you know, feel free. My, my phone numbers are on here. It's my cell phone, which is my office phone. Call me, text me. I get texts all day long. People take pictures of what's on their screen. Send me a text. Is this legitimate? No, delete it, you know. Don't answer that email. Turn off your computer, turn it back on. Whatever I can do to just get them over this and not have them because these things have picked up in their effectiveness over the past month because they've added this little key phrase at the bottom that says 
you've got five minutes or all of your data will be destroyed. People now are like, oh, I can't call my friend, my sister, my you know, computer guy. I, I can't call anybody other than them because I've only got five minutes. That's bogus. <laughs> you can leave it sit there for two days and it's just gonna sit there and as long as you don't call the number, it's just gonna sit there. Your data is not gonna get destroyed. Nothing bad's gonna happen. They want you to panic. They want you to make a bad decision and they want you to call the number. And if you just turn off your computer, turn it back on, they go away. 90% of the time, they go away. There's two out there. Most of the ones are just a pop-up. You reset your machine, you close your browser, reopen your browser through Task Manager, they're gone. One out of 10 will be the version that's actually a virus. You turn your machine off, back on, it's back. It's, it's there, it's, it's embedded in your machine. You can't get rid of it, but I can. You still don't have to call the number. It's still just a scam, it's not real, and they're still just trying to rip you off. So, yes. I had an experience where my personal Gmail account was having like an error. Mm -hmm. So I did like a quick Google search and I called the number, which I shouldn't have. And I called the number and the gentleman answered and I was so silly because he said, well, I'm, I'm going to send you um, a code so that you can reset your password for the Google. And he asked me for the code that was sent to my phone and I gave it to him. So he had access to my email, he deleted all of my emails, all of my files are gone. And then the reason I caught on to it, because he's like, okay, now I need remote access to your computer. I'm like, what? Yeah. So it's like, you don't need remote access mm -hmm. to my computer. So I hung up the phone. Okay. But he wanted yeah. he wanted it all. So he that email is not my personal email. So I learned a big lesson. Yeah. I'm like, oh, and gosh. that the biggest thing is people don't realize why and how much they want to get into your email. You think... You know, they hacked my email account. I didn't have, it was just like pictures, personal pictures. And but yeah. do you have um, a login at your bank? Do you have a no, login? No, I didn't. Because that's that. what they want. Because if you can get into somebody's email account, mm -hmm. you can go to Wells Fargo, click on forgot password, they mm -hmm. email a link to reset your password, <coughs> they reset your password, they're into your bank. Yeah, they do it. They do it at Facebook. They do it at the bank. They do it at your credit cards. They do it wherever they can get into. Once they have access to your email, they can access your whole life because yeah. everything resets by emailing you a reset link, and that is the key to what they're trying to do because your email is nothing. They use it to either email viruses to everybody in your contact list, or they use it to reset all your passwords and hack your entire life. But it is a big deal if somebody hacks your email. Don't think, oh, it's just my email. I'll just change my password because they can get in there and especially if they've got the remote access to your machine, they can come right into your machine and use your email that you have your password saved and then you're done. So yeah, I don't use that email. Yep. It was, I was blessed because I didn't have that email. It was a new email, okay. and it wasn't linked to any of my okay. personal files. So that so that's the key. If it, you you have to look at how much is that email yeah. connected to, yeah. and how how much of my life is exposed by this email. So, but I'm going to wrap it up here. It's five two. If you have any questions, I'm going to hang out as long as people have questions. Uh, if you have to leave, feel free to leave. If you have any questions, email me, call me, text me. I respond to everything all day, all night. Um, don't be surprised if you get a response to an email at 2 in the morning. Um, I just don't sleep. I'm up all the time. I, I do service calls at midnight because people call me at midnight. So um, call me, email me, text me. I can help you answer questions, whatever you've got. Um, Jeff, do you have anything to close One with? more thing I forgot to mention at the beginning for people who are watching online, and this will be recorded too, and some people will watch it there, but there are, um, on the page where you can watch the video, 
there are some forms like this form that I was telling people they could fill out. That is posted on there, so you, if you're online watching, you can download that, and you can just email me. Plus, the slideshow is there. I should have said that at the beginning. Uh, okay. And then, then ask you. all these forms, I'm going to put them on to my Facebook page. So if you go to Facebook, Quality okay. Computer Services, so we, all this information will be there too. So we can put a link on that page, okay. so they can get access to that. So that's why I wanted to say it, and I wanted to thank everyone for coming. Yeah. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Are there any questions right off the bat? Or well, thank you all. Thanks for your My name is Grant. Grant Benny. Okay. 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 Okay.